Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to draw circles, lines, and rectangles in Kivi using the canvas. Uh, and we're going to make them dynamically resizable where they change with the changing size of your window as well. We're going to do all of this in about 15 minutes. Okay, let's get a basic Kivi window uh, opening, a basic Kivi app set up as quick as we can. Let's make a main widget, so our main screen, and just put widget as the argument passing it in. And initially you're gonna have red squiggles every time we call something that needs to get imported from Kivi. If you're using a really nice intuitive IDE, like uh, I use PyCharm from JetBrains, you should be able to just hit import this name uh, underneath it, and there'll be a lot of options. You might need to run pip and install Kivi first if you don't have these options or you're using a less intuitive IDE. And be careful when you import these names. A lot of the things we're importing are also available in Kinter, which is Python's kind of included basic GUI package. So make sure you're importing things from Kivi. But when you click them, you should get the automatic import statements at the top. If you don't, there's no problem. You just have to type in from kivi.uix.widget, import widget. Okay, and for now, we're just going to put pass here because we're just trying to get the window to open. All right, and so we're going to make a class that is going to be a Kivi app. This is important. Um, whatever you name this will also be important. So my app is what I'll call this. But if you're making it for something specific, like uh, you're going to make the classic board game Battleship or something, and you call it Battleship app or whatever you call it. You need to have an accompanying file in your project structure called whatever this, whatever you named this, minus the word app. So if I call it my app, I need a file that is my.kv. And I apologize, I know that's small text up there, but this file is my.kv. And the only thing we have to put in that for this basic tutorial is we're gonna say basically what window we want it to load. And for us, that's main widget. So the format of that is main widget with a colon, and then you come down and in square brackets, same main widget um, with uh, angled brackets. So we're gonna talk more about the KV design language in future tutorials. This is obviously um, gonna be a series on Kivi. We're getting more into mobile app and uh, resizable app development with Kivi. But for now, just put this in here so that main widget will load up when the uh, app boots up. And then the last basic thing we need to do for setup um, is to say if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to with two, uh, two equal signs um, and then in per quotations underscore underscore main underscore underscore so that is just checking if this is our main uh if this is our main app if this is our main window and if it is then call that my app or whatever uh you named your app and then with the parentheses dot run and then uh parentheses like this so uh, we have to import the app real quick so import uh kivi dot app dot app um and again be careful when you import things that you're importing stuff from Kivi. That's the most important thing. But actually just looking at what's on the screen right now, this, you know, 13 lines and it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not even all um, super useful. Like I have comments and spaces all over the place. But if we run that, you already get this window that is resizable and it has that my at the top. So whatever you named it, my app, battleship app, whatever, that should appear at the top and the window is resizable. Okay, so I promised in hopefully the title of this video, we're drawing shapes and we're gonna draw three shapes in this video. And what we're gonna draw is we're gonna draw a rectangle, a circle and a line, and we're gonna show how to make them resizable within your Kivi uh, app. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into our main widget and we're going to make these three variables and we're just going to initially set them equal to none. And the reason for that will become apparent when we set up the init function. Okay. So we're going to make a rectangle, a circle and a line and set them equal to none. And now we're going to make the init function of our main app. So do def underscore underscore init. And I know Kivi has some specific syntax that like maybe if you've made a lot of Pygame with me, Pygame's syntax can tend to be a little more intuitive. Um, but this underscore underscore in it is a very common uh, uh, Python um, 
It's a very common Python uh, function. It's called Dunder, and it's just a very specific way of letting your function know it's an initialization function. And then this star star quargs means keyword arguments, and it's just a way of making however many parameters you pass in a flexible thing. So um, then we want to call super of main widget, and then self and dot underscore underscore in it underscore underscore with quargs okay and so this is allowing us to inherit all of the functionality of the pre-built kivi widget inside of ours so we're able to add on functionality and write custom functionality but at its core it will also have all the pre-built widget functionality kivi comes with and then the only other thing i'm going to do in the init is i'm going to make a new function and i'm going to call it initialize my shapes okay self dot init shapes and what we'll do is we'll come down below the init and we'll make our function init shapes init underscore shapes and then this just needs self passed in because it's inside of this class of our main widget and all we're going to do in the init shapes function is we're going to set up what's called a canvas in Kivi. So basically the two ways and they're there, they can be used together, but the two most common ways you'll see Kivi apps laid out is with the canvas, which is essentially what it sounds like. It's like a drawing platform where you put shapes and objects and images on it or uh, layouts. So like grid layout, box layout, um, different types of layouts where you can put canvases inside of layouts and use different widgets like that. Um, but this is gonna keep it a little more basic. We're gonna keep it to shapes here. And what we'll do is we'll say with self.canvas, meaning we want to use the canvas option with Kivi. Let's go ahead and say self.rect is going to now be equal to a rectangle and the only thing I'm gonna pass in here as well is whatever I want the background color to be initially. So I'm gonna say BG color is equal to, and then a capital C color, because that's we have to tell Kivi that it's looking at an RGB value. And then a little different from some other GUI packages, the RGBs in Kivi range from zero to one. So if you're used to the zero to two five five, you just have to take essentially whatever value you wanted and divide it by 255. So if initially you wanted white, let's say, and you would do 255, 255, 255, you're actually gonna do 111 here. So these are uh, these are zero to one RGB values. And for the rectangle, let's give it um, red and green. And then uh, for the circle, we'll make them all different colors. And now one thing that really bothered me is you cannot find a clear answer on how to draw a circle online for Kivi. And I think that's because it uses a widget known as ellipse. And obviously an ellipse is a circle um, or, or a circle is an ellipse, but not all ellipses are circles. So it makes sense to only have one widget that can do both. Um, and I'll make that one just pure red. And then we'll do self.line equal to line and give that a bg color equal to uh and we'll give this one red and blue so it should be like a purplish now you see a lot of red squiggles and i forgot the word color here a lot of red squiggles because we have to import every one of these so import this name and you'll see for rectangle there's a lot of options but for rectangle ellipse and line they're all from the kivi.graphics package so i'll take a look real quick if you have to manually import these you use the statement from kivi.graphics import rectangle ellipse and line okay so this row here whether your ide does it for you automatically or you have to manually type it in you need that line and then we also need to import color, which will come from kivi.graphics.color. Now this one's tricky because they both come from Kivi, but we don't want input providers mouse.color. We just want graphics.color. So that would be, again, from the kivi.graphics package. Now we have rectangle, ellipse, line, and color. And believe it or not, you can make a lot of really advanced apps if you just understand these shapes and how to draw them and make them resizable. Okay, so that's going to be it for init shapes. That's all we have to do to initialize these shapes. But a really powerful feature of Kivi is making them resizable. And to do that, we have to tell them how big they should be and where they should be relative to the window. So just to show you, if I boot this up now, 
they all just auto populate to zero zero. We haven't given them size or position hints. So they're automatically generated at zero zero. Now you can give them for forced sizes here when you make them. So I could make this size 100 100. I'm just making something up. But if we boot it up now and you look at the rectangle, it doesn't move because this is actually not going to be super useful or resizable until we do something where we update their position on size. Okay, so we're going to minimize init shapes for now. It's done. And we're going to go ahead and define an on size function. And this is something built into Kivi that your widgets will have. And I learned that it's good practice to pass in star args, so a variable amount of arguments as well. We don't need that in this example, but it's good practice. So you'll see that on my tutorials. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to make the rectangle, uh, the circle, and the line, I'm gonna give them position and size based on the window screen. So this way, I'm gonna go ahead and make these six lines, self.rect.pause, self.circle.pause, and self.line.pause. I'm going to make all of these shapes, and I'm going to make them to where they change. Actually, we don't need line size, we need line width. Um, uh, the, the size is a little different for rectangles and circles because they need an X and a Y. The line just needs width, okay? So let's say for the rectangle that I want it to be drawn at zero, zero. And for fans of the channel who have done a lot of Pi Game, zero, zero in Pi Game is the top left of the screen. Zero, zero with Kivi is the bottom left with the screen. So the difference is in the Y coordinates. Pi Game counts from zero at the top downward. Kivi counts from zero at the bottom upward, okay? So this will be bottom left corner. And then for its size, I'm going to make sure these are always integers, um, but we give it an X and a Y argument. And to make it resizable so that it's always taking up the same percentage of the screen, I'm going to use self.width, which looks at the width of my current window. And I'm just gonna make it half the width of the window. And then I'm going to make it the full height of the window, okay? So this should occupy the left half of my screen. Now for the circle, um, for position on this one, I'm going to move it so that it's uh, to the right of the, the rectangle. So it's not over top of the rectangle. And again, I'm going to make sure these are always integers, but I'm going to use self.width over two. So that'll mean that uh, its uh, X start position is at the midpoint of the screen. And then int uh, for the Y position, I'm going to say self.height times three divided by four. So it should be three quarters of the way up the window and then half the way to the right. And something different about circles, again, in Kivi, and I'm only saying the differences between Kivi and Pi Game because I know a lot of my viewers watch a lot of my Pi Game tutorials as well. When you define a circle in Kivi, you're actually doing the same sort of position definition you do with a rectangle, which is you say where the bottom left of it is going to go. And then however big your ellipse is, you're defining the rectangle that that ellipse fits inside. So when I say that int self.width over two is the X position of my circle, in Pi Game, that would define the center point of my circle. In Kivi, that defines the lower left corner, okay? Just a quick tangent to make sure everyone understands why we're doing self.width over two. When we see it on the canvas, it's gonna make sense. And then I'm gonna make my circle, which is really an ellipse, I'm gonna make it uh, one quarter the size of the screen. So int self.width over four as my X dimension and int self.height over four as my Y dimension. Now for uh, the line, actually I shouldn't have done position, it's self.line.points and any line just needs two points to fully define it and you don't separate them out. You just give them essentially four arguments separated by commas. So I'm gonna say I want to start in the lower left corner, so zero, zero, and then I want to span the entire width of the screen and the entire height of the screen. So this is creating a diagonal line from the bottom left of my screen to the top right of my screen, and I'm gonna make it five wide, okay? 
The reason I put this in an on size argument rather than in my init shapes is because if I put these same lines up here, then that's where they'll be when the window boots up, but then it will not dynamically change with the resizing of the window. You have to move that into an on size function. So that was a lot of talking. I haven't even shown you these shapes yet, but let's take a look now. All right, you can see a yellow rectangle, which was our color 110 RNG, and it starts in the bottom left corner and it goes to halfway of the window and it fills the entire height. We have a circle, which is one quarter the height and one quarter the, the width that starts at three quarters of the way up the window, halfway to the right. And we have a purple line that goes from the bottom left to the lower right. The really powerful part about Kivi is if we were to resize this to about the size of a phone, Okay, we still have a red circle, which now is much more of an oval, taking up one quarter of the width, one quarter of the height. This is where Kivi becomes super duper powerful. And you can make Pygame windows resizable using these same principles, but Pygame is not cross-platform compatible like Kivi. So for mobile app development, where one program that you create works for Android, uh, iOS, Mac, PC, even Linux, I believe, Kivi is the language you wanna go with. And knowing these concepts for drawing shapes is really, really super important. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Be on the lookout for a bunch more Kivi tutorials coming on the channel. I definitely want to get into mobile app development with Python, among a lot of other big things which we've talked about on the channel. So a massive thank you to my Patreon supporters, uh, Dale and Philip, and a massive thank you to everyone who continues watching videos, leaving comments, leaving likes on the channel. Feel free to comment below what you want to see more of on the channel, what you'd like to see next. And if you have any questions about Kivi, um, as always, thanks for watching. Good luck. See you next time. Thanks. Bye.